and welcome Sister Anuka. Good morning to you all the way from New Delhi, India. Morning to you. Please say big hello to Brother Kenneth and uh, the family there for us. Today we're concluding our parable of the talents that we started yesterday. And today we're doing part two. Good morning, Dave and Margaret. Good to have you both on the broadcast. We're in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Yesterday I had done the first part, and today we're going to attempt to conclude our broadcast. All right. We'll just wait a few more seconds, yeah? Welcome everybody else on the broadcast, and then we will jump right back in. Uh, for those that will come on later, let me ask those of you that are on now, if you want to write into your comment section there, Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30. Matthew 25, verses 24 through 30. So go ahead and write that in as we wait for others to join us. And then uh, we'll do an introduction here and read the scripture again so everybody's uh, caught up and everybody's on the same page. All right. All right. Matthew 25. Um, we're going to do... We are in Matthew's Gospel. Good morning, Pastor Carolyn. Uh, so good to have you from Baltimore with us, as always. Uh, just love some of the quotes you put out there. Challenging people. Holding people accountable. I mean, enjoying your, your daily or every other opportunity to read some of that. All right, we're going we're gonna to read, so by the time I'm done with these, uh, verse 14 through 30, not verse 24 through 30, but yes, we, we finished yesterday, around about verse 25 somewhere. But let me read from verse 14, then at least we get, we get a, a, a proper context here and something to really continue to build on from right uh i'll just make this opening remark as well Ju you know uh, during these uh, parables i've been saying that it's amazing if i was preaching some of the popular more fashionable uh themes today uh this particular platform would be exploding but we're living in a time and a season where it seems i'm not saying it is uh holy but uh, it seems that the day we're living in, there's a real disconnect uh, when it comes to the Word of God uh, being preached, the Word of God being digested, the Word of God being consumed, uh, the Word of God being our ultimate compass uh, from the time we started with the very first parable. Uh, we attempted to, you know, uh, uh, give it a title as the the manual for successful living. And it's all Jesus's, you know, uh, uh, putting it out there for his disciples to make sure that his disciples don't miss heaven in all that they're doing. These are the things you need to pay attention to. So in these parables, there are keys, there are principles that if we stay with it, we definitely will not miss heaven. So good morning to Minister Eddie. Good to have you, Edward on the broadcast. All right, so let me read. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants. And yesterday at the top of uh, our broadcast, I, I emphasized the word, uh, you know, a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants, not somebody else's servants, but his own servants. So pay attention to that. And delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents 
to another two and to another one, to each according, according to his own ability. Please pay attention to that very, very important first to, 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 to you know, just hold that, that thought. To each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he, he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who, who had received uh, two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground, dug uh, in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Yes, enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 22, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. One of the one of the the titles we could give this parable, because it really uh, focuses attention on this servant who hid his talent. We could call this parable the parable of the unprofitable servant. Welcome, Eleanor. Good to have you, sis. So, in our opening yesterday introduction, I told you that the previous. Um, parable that we we covered there uh you know the, uh, the 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 previous one that i that i had covered for you the wise and the foolish virgins there I, I i shared with you how that particular parable was all about preparation you know for 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 eternity whereas this particular um parable it's all about productivity it's about pro productivity uh, another way we could put it, we could say the emphasis on the first was about watching, you know, being ready. And this particular one, it's about working for the Lord. It's about doing what needs to be done for the kingdom of God with what the kingdom of God has entrusted to us. So yesterday we concluded right uh, at the place where we said we will look at what it means, you know, to determine uh, what our talents are, because some folks will will have a problem understanding. Well, what is my talent? You know, uh, how do I how do I know I have a talent? You know, I, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not given to, you know, go to the mission field abroad in some foreign nation. Uh, what what is it that I have? And I, you know, I concluded the broadcast yesterday. We're, we're talking about a lady in our church, and you know, an older lady who simply has taken a list of all the members of the congregation and found out their birthdays. And all she does on their birthdays, she makes sure that she writes a birthday card to them or to their children or, or just that little service. That's her way of recognizing 
or determining what she feels is the talent that God gave her. It's just to brighten somebody else's day. Uh, good morning to you, Brother Ed. Good to have you on the broadcast. So many lessons we can learn from these parables, uh, and especially this one, the, the talents. And the, the lesson we said yesterday before we concluded was be productive where the Lord has given you ability and opportunity. We ought to be productive and we ought to use the ability that God has given us and maximize the opportunities that come our way. Too often opportunity, somebody once told me opportunity is like a bird that has wings. If you don't grab a hold to it when it comes, uh, it will take off and you'll never be able to get it. So it's important to recognize those God-given kingdom, you know, divine moments of opportunity and where you need to just maximize your ability and leave, let, your, you let your ability impact that opportunity and you leave it in the hands of God. But too often we look at things that come into our lives and things that come our way and we're wondering, why is this happening to me? Who is this person? Why did God allow this person into my life at this stage? And, you know, uh, I always take this approach. Our lives are about writing our history. And sometimes the Lord allows certain people in the early chapters of your life. But as you go through the chapters of your life, there are certain people that, you know, perhaps the Lord will allow for more than one chapter in your life. But you have to be bold and courageous to acknowledge that certain certain stages of writing your history, not everybody can come with you right to the end of your story. Uh, they are permitted certain uh, supporting cast uh, uh, times, but you're the main character and that's all that should matter. You need to write your story and make sure your story leaves an indelible mark on those who read your story. So. I, I, I said yesterday, after listening and reading and, uh, you know, analyzing the parable and breaking it down and all the different areas we went through, we should be asking the question, then what is my talent? What is my talent? You know, yeah, again, we used it not as a measure of money, but of ability and opportunity, right? We know that in the parable, the, the, the man you know, that uh, called his own servants, he gave them talents. And we know that we, we liken the talent to, you know, a, a, a day's wage. So we want to continue today and look at how do we determine what our talent is. Now, w one of the things we should start right at the beginning and understand and settle in our hearts, not everybody has, has the same talent. Okay, what God has given me, I'm not overly convinced that everybody has what I have been given. Uh, I think God gives to us based on our unique makeup, our unique background, our unique upbringing, our unique uh, worldview. God has given to us a, a talent that matches your unique, if I can call it, spiritual DNA or your kingdom DNA. And also the number of talents may differ, right? You may have one talent. Somebody else may have three talents. They may be able to flow in the prophetic. They may be able to flow with the evangelistic. They may be able to flow as an apostolic. They may be able to flow in the mercy gifts. They may be able to flow with the gift of discerning of spirits, you know, deliverance, healing, whatever. Uh, some of them have multiple gifts. So, you know, some may only have one talent. Some may be like the, you know, the man here yeah, in, in, in the story, in the, tell, in the parable. He got five talents. Another one got two. So that's what we can conclude from this parable, that the Lord allocates to us as he will. Okay? The Lord gives us. Remember the Lord to each one. The Lord gives to each one of us according to our ability. Remember at the top, we read in, let me just go there. We read in uh, Matthew 25 there. I actually uh, underlined it in my, in my reading, yeah? That the Lord gives us according to our ability. Verse 15, and to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another 
1, to each according to his own ability. Uh, I want you to write in there for me, according to my own ability. Just write into the comment section, according to my own ability. Uh, good to have my big sister, Minister Carol Noll, on the broadcast this morning, all the way from Durban, South Africa. So remember to each of us, the Lord gives according to our abilities. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8, as you go ahead and write in there, according to my ability. Come on, by way of participating this Saturday morning, yes, uh, Sister Renuka has got it there, according to my own ability. Uh, the Lord's not going to give you, you know, giftings and gift mixes according to your apostles' uh, ability, according to you know, your bishop's ability, according to, you know, your evangelist's ability. No, no, the Lord's going to give you talents according to your own ability. And that's what I had to learn the hard way. I stopped trying to be like somebody else. I stopped trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, exercise ministry as others exercise ministry and just settle on the fact that I have this unique uh, makeup that God is going to use and give me talents according to my own ability. Good to have my my uh, younger brother there, uh, Pastor Stu, Crooked Neck, all the way from Ministiquin. Good to have you, brother. Uh, we are in Matthew chapter 25 and verses 14 through 30. We're concluding the parable of the talents. Uh, and yeah, we can see... We're talking about the nature of these talents uh, being different. Uh, and we look at Paul, uh, you know, making this very clear. Paul saying, yeah, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. When you have come to, to, to accept, embrace, acknowledge, and settle in your heart this particular uh, uh, portion of Scripture, it'll make your life so much better. It'll make your, 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 your kingdom walk, your kingdom journey, it'll make sense for you that you don't have to try to compete with anybody. You don't have to try to be like anybody. You just got to be you, uh, develop the abilities that you have, you know, uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, get as much help to, to get your abilities to be at their peak, you know, uh, uh, functioning at the best, at the highest level. Uh, you don't have to try to be like anybody. All right. So let me go on here, Paul. He says, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts, uh, sorry, having then gifts differing, According to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we can see, we can see that the Apostle Paul in addressing the Roman church is probably addressing them because in that church, perhaps, perhaps, I'm saying perhaps there were those who were struggling with trying to find what talent they have, or perhaps trying to, trying to, you know, go after somebody else's ability when uh, they don't recognize that you have abilities and you have to understand your ability. God has given you talents that match your ability. And with that, you are more than a match for anything that comes your way. God has uniquely gifted you based on your ability. All right. Some teach, others serve. Some may do more than one thing. Some may have more than one talent. Um, 
celebrate where you are, but always looking to God to, you know, increase you, you know, be what God needs to be, allow him to be what he needs to be in you. Uh, stop restricting the flow of God's grace in your life. But everyone has gifts, Paul says there to the Roman church, differing according to the grace that is given to us. If you look at those verses there, Paul starts out in, his, in, in verses 3 there, he starts out talking about grace, and through the through those uh, couple of verses there, he bring us brings us right back to grace, gifts differing according to the grace that's given to us. He starts talking to us about you know what minister at the place in grace that you have. So some ta some of our talents are easier to determine than others. In some cases, our abilities are very evident; they're visible; they're they're outward; they're they're, they're you know. Uh, public knowledge, if, if I can use that word. In some cases, our, our abilities, you know, are inherited or gained, uh, you know, wealth or, you know, if you come from some kind of uh, social family, uh, affluent family, you know, uh, influences, um, you can see in the natural, right? But some abilities might be hidden at first. Right. I know for me, my 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 talent was hidden for the longest time. Good to have Minister Zeneline with us all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. For example, your yeah, teaching and preaching, I would never have thought that I had the ability to teach or to preach in view of the childhood I had. I, I, I did not see myself as a public speaker. Why? Because I had an issue, you know, socially uh, with public. I could not, you know, function in a big uh, crowd per se. But, you know, look what the Lord has done over these many years. Uh, look at the nations that the Lord has allowed my life to touch. Uh, look at the tens of thousands of people my wife and I have been able to uh, intersect with uh, as a result of, you know, yes, Pastor Carolyn saying she was very shy. You know, uh, you, may, you may start there, you know, like I had this, you know, dysfunction about being socially, you know, adept kind of thing. Uh, a lot of us have had these things, but the wonderful thing about serving God and the wonderful thing about God's grace is we don't have to stay there. God can, you know, cause us to become all that he wants us to be if we'll just allow him. So some talents uh, may therefore lie dormant, awaiting the shaking, the provocation, the challenge, you know, the stirring of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but everybody's got something. There's nobody that, that doesn't have anything. And, you know, for those that think that it's only those that get up in the pulpit that has some something to give or something to offer of credibility. No, everybody that names the name of Jesus invited Jesus into their hearts and life and made Jesus Lord of their life. By virtue of the indwelling Holy Spirit, you have all these gifts of the Holy Spirit that are there waiting for your ability now to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to flow with your ability through those gifts that he has. Amen. So through trial and error, we can determine which talent uh, is the one that, you know, our ability really seems to function at, you know, uh, maximum performance. I know for myself, um, I've always said this about my talent or about my giftings. You know, uh, when I came into ministry, came into this country, I just served where the Lord placed me. That's the beginning. I served in whatever capacity I found myself in. I just served, served, served. And guess what? As I served, I started to see little glimpses of what my, my capability first uh, was, uh, given the, 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 the dormant abilities that were in me. So, I believe that is so current for so many of us. Good to have Sister Marion on the broadcast with us. So through, through trial and error, we try different areas of service to see which ones might come naturally. So you're never going to really fully understand 
or determine what your talent is. If you just sit back and wait, you know, somehow, someday, God's going to step out of heaven and he's going to write on your journal page for the day. This is your talent. No, no, it's not going to happen. Like that. You have to serve where you are, where you planted, serve and just keep serving. If, you know, with time, you start to see where your area of strength is in what gift mix. And that is how we determine our talent. And just like a muscle, you know, just like a muscle, when you exercise your muscle, uh, you know, good things happen. You're able to bear more weight. You're able to, you know, push more. But if you just let that muscle lay, it will become really non-existent because it, it's just become so weak without exercise. It's the same without gifts. Try them, try them again. Uh, for some talents, only develop through hard work. Some of the talents that God has, you know, innately placed in us, they only really come to their full maximum potential by way of exercise, by way of use, by way of use. You've heard the, the saying, use it or lose it. And a lot of people lose it because they don't use it. You know, they become intimidated by people's faces or people's, you know, uh, achievements, people more educated than them per se, uh, people more affluent or influential people. And they refuse to use their gifts because they feel like, what can I offer that person? What can I say to that person? They got everything. Well, guess what? Uh, that's sometimes what God delights in. Just using some of us that seemingly have nothing to confound those who have everything. So seeking counsel from others, often uh, others can often see our strengths. I know there's uh, ministers on the broadcast that, that, that can attest to this. Uh, in our congregations, in the people that God has placed in our care, we can see uh, some of the gifts, you know, that are that are there, uh, some of the talents that some people have. And uh, when we offer them places to serve, it's because we're trying to get them to exercise, trying to get them to come up higher in that area of gifting or of that talent as we are talking about here. We see strengths and we see weaknesses better than we ourselves. So it's kind of like that game of chess or that game of drafts, you know, checkers. You're standing on the outside and you're watching two guys or two ladies playing and you can see all the moves, but the people involved in the game at the time, they're so, so focused, uh, they can't see some of the moves that you perhaps can see from the outside. Uh, Solomon praised the value of receiving counsel. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 14. Uh, where there's no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Chapter 12, verse 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Chapter 15, verse 22 says, Without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. I don't know about you, but I would rather choose some wise counselors around me so that whatever plans I have, they can be established. Now, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 says, Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. You may be wise in your latter days. Not just in your present state, but all the way through. All right? So remember, uh, preparation we talked about in the last uh, uh, parable. Today we're talking about in this parable, the parable of the talents. We're talking about productivity. You know, uh, on the broadcast yesterday, I talked about, you know, uh, it's not enough just to be confessing or professing. A lot, a lot of times people are professing and confessing something they don't have. It's like going to an ATM with an ATM card, knowing that you don't have money in that in that account and you're trying to make a withdrawal. You can you can go back and forth with that card until the machine swallows up your card. So uh, through such personal diligence, advice, we're talking about counsel here yeah, from others, 
we can gain insight to the abilities and the opportunities that the Lord has given for him or her. You know, over the years that I've been here in North America, uh, we've taken many teams to Israel, to Honduras, to uh, Mexico, uh, South Africa. We've gone to Zambia, Mozambique, uh, Madagascar, Mauritius. We, we've gone to all kinds of places. And often, just like Jesus set the template for us, he took those 12, those 12 chosen ones and he took them into the field and showed them how things can be done. Then he allowed them to exercise, to use those gifts because there was coming a day when he would leave and now they would be left with the mandate. They would be left with the mission. And that's why people like myself and I know other ministers, they take mission teams. Why? Because they want to give people an opportunity to see what it is that they really carry because sometimes we can see in the lives of those that are entrusted to us, we can see the definite gift mixes that they operated or they have sitting dormant. And our role per se is to stir them up, shake them up, provoke them, but it's the Holy Ghost that will carry them with the power necessary to impact with their ability, with their gift mix, with their talent. In conclusion, yeah, if we are the citizens of the kingdom of heaven, the citizens of the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus being our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, uh, we should understand that we all have been given some ability in which to serve him. Some ability. All of us have something, you know, in, in the starting of this uh, particular uh, parable, you know, the the the. the the owner of the vineyard, yeah, or not the vineyard, the, you know, the, the man that went on a, on a journey and, and called his own servants. The, the thing here yeah, that he done is he gave to each as he will, five to you, two to you, one to you. He gave. Each of them had, this is what they had. They each had the same thing. They had given talents. Yes, maybe they were given, one was given more than the other, but they all had the same thing. They, there was nobody excluded, and it's the same in the kingdom of God. None of us have been excluded from the commonwealth of God. We have been given inalienable rights, gifts, and privileges. One day, Jesus will return, and there will be a reckoning or an accounting of what we've done, just like this... Uh, owner came back and wanted an accounting from these three particular servants, Jesus will, 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 will look for an accounting from us. What have you done with the talent or the gifts that I've given you? How have you used them and all the opportunities I created for you with your own ability? Yes, if we're going to be prepared, like the, the previous parable said, preparing, uh, and if we uh, are, are prepared, then we need to be productive also. So maybe maybe write that in for me as we conclude. Uh, we need to be prepared and productive. We need to be prepared and productive. Or make it personal. I am prepared and I am productive. Or I'm going to be prepared and I'm going to be productive, whichever suits you. I'll wait a moment while you write that in. My one fear as I conclude this to, uh, this morning, my one fear for those of us that have, you know, been given so much in God. Thank you, Brother Ed. We need to be prepared and productive, not just, you know, be prepared and standing there waiting, but we ought to be productive also. My one fear for us is that in having done all we do, uh, my one prayer is that we never become like this, this one servant who hid everything that he was given, hid his talent. And, uh, you know, so the question I ask you today, 
as we conclude, are you productive? And, I, and I'm almost afraid to ask you the next question. Or are you like the wicked and lazy servant? You know, that's, that's my fear that some will, will, will hear that, that, that refrain, you lazy and wicked servant. Will Jesus say to you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. That's what I want to hear. And I know that most of us, you know, sober, we want to hear that. We want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And, and with, with that well done, that well done, good and faithful servant, uh, we want to hear, enter into the joy of your Lord. You know, as parents, we, we rejoice when our children succeed. You know, when our children, you know, make it, they graduate. We're there to, to cheer them on throughout the year. Uh, and then when they, when they get to the, you know, to, 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 to graduate, we're there to celebrate. Well done, son. Well done, daughter. Uh, they can see the joy that we have. Well, so too, Jesus wants to have that same joy become yours. Enter into the joy of our Lord. I definitely don't want any of our viewers, any of our listeners, any of our partners, network partners, friends, family, uh, say you wicked and lazy servant, go to the place of torment. Let me conclude this morning by speaking a blessing that this weekend will be a supernatural weekend of God's love, favor, and grace multiply wherever you are, wherever you're serving, whoever you're sitting under, or if you're speaking, may the Lord Jesus be revealed through your life in a new, dynamic, fresh way. May there be signs and wonders running over in your life, uh, just like the Bible says. Uh, we want to thank you for being with us today. We want to say, God uh, bless you. Keep the faith. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on Monday again uh, at 9 a.m. Canadian Central Standard Time. We'll be back here on this broadcast, on this platform. Pastor Kendon will be back with you. I'm looking forward to being in the U.S. this coming weekend, uh, this coming week. Uh, we're going to have a great time in Beaufort, Georgia. Uh, Brother Carmen, good to have you on the broadcast. Um, so please, again, as always, one thing we ask, please like and share our broadcast. Take the, uh, the link, copy the link, and send it to as many people as you can. Leave it out there on your platform if you must. So in order for you to get the full gist of, of this parable that Jesus told, please uh, make sure you go back on our platform uh, look at part one, the parable of the talents, and then read it in the context of, you know, of both of them, part one, part two, in order for you to get the full lesson here, prepared and productive. We love you. God bless you.